listening, pay attention. You're looking for capitals. Bexley Heath School in Kent is one of the largest comprehensives in the country, with over 2,000 pupils. Like many schools, the boys aren't performing as well as the girls. John Bailey's come to examine the problem. Over the next three programmes, he'll focus on Year 10 boys in the English department, headed by Laura Thompson. Girls achieve. Um, much more than boys, and the differential is quite pronounced. So girls in our school at both SATs and GCSE do better, quite markedly, than the boys. Girls, um, for example, at SATs, get around 70% level five and above, you know, whereas boys are about 50% five and above. So there's about 20% differential. 20%. Yeah. The top sets in our school are actually fairly even. It's not such a huge issue. It tends to be the CD borderline students that there's this huge gulf. It's a massive challenge because that is where we lose a huge proportion of the boys. OK, and year 10, uh, specifically, what are we seeing there? Really, those students should, at, you know, year 10, be, be attaining, you know, the higher grades, the Cs. Um, and sometimes their behaviour presents itself to us in such a way and it's very difficult to teach. Um, so, obviously, we'll be interested to see what you've got to say. Um, particularly so <laughs> with the boys. John meets some typical Year 10 boys on the CD borderline to gather some clues about what might be blocking their learning. What's yep. your favourite subject, by the way? PE. What's your favourite subject? Um, PE, probably, yeah. It's all active thing. If if we do a practical oh, lesson, so. yeah, I know you won't do it in English. Practical lesson, I guarantee everyone would behave. If I was coming here to teach and you advise and you were advising me on what sort of stuff to put in lessons, what would you advise? You need to. You, need to... you don't. I mean, some teachers they come in it, and that, uh, that it sounds like everyone uses it, but strict. That's not very. You, you can't expect us to sit there for the whole lesson. Like, don't talk. You got to talk. You got to get some of the and like, you, stuff you out. You. Right, Steph. Spaceship. Spaceship. The boys are from NQT Carrie Andrews English class. Zach, hand up. And John's observing a lesson well with them on H.G. Wells' Terry. War of the Worlds. What is an alien? Right, shh, shh. Hands up, OK? Don't shout over each other. Right, Luanne. E.T. E.T., good. <laughs> Brian. Spaceships. OK, we've got no, that. No, no, I mean, I mean space, like, like the universe. OK, people at the back, thank you. So the universe. Where do we get all these ideas from? OK. All right. OK. Someone that hasn't said anything today. Yeah. man. All right, I don't want to have to stop picking on people. Bobby. Films and TVs. Right, Bobby, I'm sorry, I didn't... I don't think everyone heard you then, so we're going to stop. OK. OK, Bobby, again. Films, and that's on TV. Good, the media. There's underachievement with the boys mm. in this department. Mm. They're not doing as well as the girls. Mm. You're, you're new to teaching mm. and you're new to the school. What do you think about boys? Well, nine times out of ten, it must be sort of a laziness factor or we need to capture their interest a little bit more or praise them more. It may just be, you know, OK, they yeah. really need that praise. They need taking to one side and saying, you know, look, you're doing really, really well. When we're establishing ourselves with classes like this, um, our praise has got to be for genuine things, but I don't think we can give too much of it. Mm. Right, Ryan. Right. Yes, um, you can get them on the internet as well, like, and there's, like, people around that think aliens actually believe, like, are true. All right, brilliant. Well done, guys. So we've established, all right, that we get these ideas from the media. OK, so now I'm going to get, give you a little bit of background knowledge about the book, OK? War of the Worlds, most of you have probably seen the film, <laughs> so you might have a general idea of what's going on. But in the film... <laughs> In the film, OK, it's based around America, isn't it? Yeah. But the actual book <laughs> is based around Britain. Is that? <laughs> so people used to look up at Mars. It was the easiest planet to see. And they used to say, well, you know, what sort of other life forms live on Mars? But we thought we were such a strong country, OK, that no-one could overrule us. Dan, focusing on me, please. Ryan. 
But if you know what I mean, I like your presence in the class. You're kind of um, upright and in command. <laughs> That class sort of sent shivers down my spine sometimes, uh, but they were so good. And I have—I've got to be honest—I've seen a bit of an improvement since September, and they seem to be responding a lot better. But I found through um, experience with them that being confrontational doesn't work. Not in a—not obviously being outright confrontational, but you know, real sort of commands, sit down. You know, you have to be really gently, gently with that sort of class. All right, brilliant. Well done, guys. Okay, let's move on then. What we're going to do now. OK, right, Ryan, what did you want to say? Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah, if people say there's aliens, why do you know when people go up to visit a moon? Not visit, yeah, but mm. they go up in a space... No. Well, what is it? A rocket, yeah. Why don't they ever meet aliens? Yeah? Well, this is it. This is something why we call it science well, fiction. Well, they just said that robot right. planet. Right. OK, guys. Um, but one at a time, please. All right, Emily. Why don't someone just go to, like, Mars and you see if there is... You can't stand it, it's, like, too hot. I something. think... It, no. Yeah, I think, like Amy and Zach say, that's it's too it's hot. It's like the red planet. It's that's too hot. Right, OK, Zach, what did you want to say? Uh, they sent that robot, oh, weren't they, yeah. from, and that rocket yeah. up to Mars. Mm. Oh. To find out, basically. Am I right in saying mm. that there was... And this is kind of a perennial thing. There, there was some anxiety there. You sort of thought they ought to talk. Mm. You thought it was a good idea for them to mm. exchange some ideas. But you're yeah. worrying about getting through to the end of the lesson. Yeah. And so you're, you're sim simultaneously trying to encourage the discussion mm. and smother it at the same time. Yeah, that's right. And it's, I find that really difficult, especially with a class like that, because they're very, very verbal. And when it comes to actually getting things on paper, they struggle. Not all of them, but a lot of them actually struggle. And they're very good. Their ideas are fine and they're very sort of, you know, they're very interested. But getting them to actually write it on paper is really difficult. So I'm sort of in this thing of, are you actually trying to get me to keep talking? because you don't want to write, or are you genuinely interested? If robots landed on our country, we'd destroy them, wouldn't we? So there could actually be aliens destroying them. That's but this is the thing, Ryan, do we know that that's what would happen? Would we destroy them? If you see World of the Worlds, Ryan, then you might think again. Right, we need to press this on a little bit, people. All right, so, Steph, would you hand out some of these for me, please? Thank you. And, Ryan, the rest, one each, please. <laughs> Have you got to do some writing? Yes. I'm, I'm sort of stuck with that, of where to say, right, OK, now we write, now it's time to get our ideas on paper. Because I don't want to smother their ideas, because they, they, they come up with some yes. really good ideas. But when do you draw... That's what I need to learn. When do you draw the line and say, OK, enough, enough now, or we'll come back to this later? See, I can, I can think of two ways... two ways of thinking about that. One is designing some talking time into the lesson, mm. um, or some interactive activity that allows them to talk. OK, so you could say... Bang, you've got some good ideas, I want to hear about them. Mm. Turn to your neighbour, tell them what your idea mm. are, write some notes and then mm. read them out to me. Mm. That's one way, isn't it? Another way to do it, you could train some children, so, uh, OK, we want to get these ideas mm. down. Henry, come to the front and make a spider-gram. Mm. That's a good idea, actually. <laughs> English teacher and head of sixth form Andy Potts has been at Bexley Heath for many years and believes the boys' self-esteem is also an issue. We're a secondary school in a borough with an 11 plus system. Every conversation when you're encouraging a boy or a girl, but particularly a boy, to succeed is, but this isn't a very good school in comparison with Bexley Grammar School. Um, and you have to say, you have to try and explain to them that, that just because very few people do very well doesn't mean to say that you can't. So we have an issue right the way through Key Stage 4 about what do we do about boys. Are the girls going up and the boys staying where they were? What's... Uh, no, I think the girls are doing equally as well. They may be slightly improving. The boys are doing, slight, are doing less well. Some of what you've said about selection, mm. about feeling you're at the bottom of the pit and all mm. that, those are important setting factors, but you're saying that something yeah. dynamic is happening, something's going on. I don't personally feel that it's as simple as saying boys can't do coursework and girls can, which is what you tend to read in, in um, papers, or boys are better at exams or anything like that. I, I, it seems to me that it's more to do with their way of working and, their, and, and it's more to do with pedagogy in a way. It's the way that we talk to boys and the way we um, approach teaching them. <laughs> Okay. 
The next day, Carrie's planned a lively starter to the lesson to use up some of that surplus energy. As a starter, what I want us to do is just quickly sketch your idea of an alien. And it could be anything. It could be anything you, you feel it might be. There's no set rules about what it should look like. It's your idea of an alien. Three minutes, off you go. <laughs> OK, what about size? Talk to me about size. <laughs> now, what I want you to do is to stand up, please, this side of the room. Just stand up. Picture of your alien. Can you please show it to this side of the room? Now, this side of the room, I want you to tell me what you notice, and there's no right or wrong answer. None of them look like they're from this, uh, this Earth. Good, so they all look different. They don't look like they're from this Earth. Excellent. Jodie? They all look different from us. That's what I was getting at. They all look different from this us. Is not fact. OK. OK, well done, you guys. Sit yourself down. This side, stand up. Hold your pictures up and show this side. Anyone else on this side? What do you see, Amy? I like Bobby's because I think it's really individual, and I like Jamie's because I think the eyes look good and remind me of alien-like people. <laughs> OK, good. So, again, what we're noticing is everyone's perception of aliens is different. We don't all think the same thing. OK, well done, guys. Sit yourself down, please. That's me. I'm special. I'll show you. Stuart? Come down this way. Well done. Right. I need you just to listen to me just for two minutes. That's all I'm asking of your attention, just for two minutes and then the rest is up to you. I want you to write a paragraph on the points in your grid using P, E, E, which is... Point, point, point evidence, evidence, evidence explanation. explanation. Good. Now, this is how it's going to work. You're going to do me two points for appearance, you're going to do me one for movement and one for sound. Now, that should take us up to about, I don't know, ten past three. Excuse me. 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 It seems that by actively engaging boys and allowing them to present their own ideas within a structured lesson, we might be seeing one of the ingredients to raising performance. You got them into activity um, right away and got them thinking about it, so I like that a lot. Um, and, and, and your positives are... are, 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 are are much more deliberate than they were. Mm. The praise worked really, really well. And I feel that um, it was just quite, quite a calm, controlled lesson, which was really, really nice. And they got on with it. And even the boys were just like, scribble, scribble, scribble. And I found that really... That was great, especially, especially the boys, I thought. And they sort of... I think the start of the lesson was quite nice because it wasn't... You know, they was actually up and they got to move and talk and perhaps get it out of their system a little bit. So I, I thought that worked quite well, actually. Yeah, that's quite a good period seven tactic, mm, actually, isn't mm. it? Give them something to do. Mm. Because, they're, because they're not going to behave like they do first thing in mm. the morning, no mm. chance. Next, John Bailey explores whether boys' underachievement could be related to a shortage of male role models. 